any any kind of fast moving water. And I have a suggestion also. A lot of guys take the darters and they take the needlefish and they take this. If you have a strong wind, uh, you're fishing the north side of Montauk and you got a wind coming out of the northwest and it's blowing like hell and you got outgoing tide blowing like anything and you put the plug out, the wind catches the line and you see your plug sweeping right across the water. All you have to do is take your line, rod tip, drop it down into the water. Now your line is going the same speed as the water's going. It's not going 35 or 25 miles an hour with the wind. So you're, all of a sudden you're going to feel, you, you, now you feel the plug right away instead of skidding all along the top. You got more control over it. If you get up on a lighthouse, it's a different story because you're up. But if you're in the surf, all you got to do is drop that there, the water picks up the line, and then it ends up, you can pick up the rod a little bit to the side and then pick it straight up and retrieve the line. If I was to, to recommend to somebody a rod to fish Montauk, where you have all these rough conditions, um, you're in the water, you're getting beat up by waves, you get beat up on rocks. I'm going to look for a rod that's durable, a blank that's durable, and I'm going to also look for a rod that's pretty parabolic. And in that I mean the action is you get that bend, where you have a moderate bend and it goes further into the blank. And the reason for that being that a lot of times when you're out in Montauk, you have a tendency, you're up on a rock, you're swimming out to a rock. Um, your angle down to the fish is always going to be greater than if you're standing on a beach casting out 200 yards or 100 yards. 200 yards is a little aggressive, but 100 yards. You're casting 100 yards on a beach. You're hooking up a fish. The angle of your line is not going to be as great as if you're standing on a rock and you hook a fish 10 feet in front of you or 20 feet in front of you. Um, gonna... Striped bass anglers. It's funny, where Kevin fishes in Cape Cod, they love the stick shads, they love the magic swimmers, mm. yet where I fish, a lot of guys are afraid of these baits. What's the, for the striped bass fishermen, what is the best way to use these baits? I've seen mm. you do quite <laughs> a few things the last few days over here. Mm. So tell me. So there's two baits that truly complement each other, I mean, a lot. Stick shad, is your most go-to bait. First, fantastic for long distance. We know there are many cases where long distance well, is key. So you have to reach the first before thinking about how to have a lure swimming or whatever. So the, the stick shot, first of all, make that very long cast. The Magic Swimmer, well, it's a jointed bait. So when you cast, you cannot expect to have the same hydrodynamics oh, or no, aerodynamics. Of the breaks in half, so yeah, the wind resistance. Obviously, half, so. so that one, first thing, long distance. And then we have that power kill. That is key. That power kill creates turbulence. So now, that bait, you can twitch it, you can jerk it, you can burn it, you can even troll it. Yeah, all a, lot kind of, of speed. a lot of guys like to... Uh, I actually mm. had a behind a boat today on a troll and it, it stayed in. But a yeah. lot of guys I know like to just work it fast. Yeah, you can work it fast as fast as you can. You can work it medium speed. But Magic Swimmer is something that's pretty unique to the canal, I think. I have rarely seen people using them in the surf. Uh, I do use them in the surf in certain situations, and they do work great. I mean, the, the shape is spot on for so many different bait fish, and the action, I mean, it looks alive. Um, in the canal, the way that we seem to do best on them is to cast pretty far up tide, and then work the plug fast on the surface. Um, it's almost like, the, like a cross between a fast-moving offshore lure and a danny plug you know you want that v wake but you have to you have to keep up with it so that it's swimming with the tide which is more natural than having it swim against the tide and you really don't want it to get past you how do you pick a reel what is the most important thing to to, to look at it if you are going to buy a reel and it doesn't have to be doesn't matter which brand it is does is it is it where you fish? Is it the rod that you own and you're going to buy? Is it trying to match with these new rods, which are lighter than anything where we've done it before? Like, how do you go about picking the right size reel? It's a great question, and there's a lot of things that go into choosing the right size reel. The first one I would say is what rods are going to go on. So if you, and where you, what rod you're going to choose is going to be where you're going to spend most of your time fishing. So here we are in the North, Shore, uh, North Fork of Long Island today, 
a nine foot rod with a VS150 or a 4,000 size Jeez, wheel yeah, yeah. is going to be ideal. And it's not because you're not going to have an opportunity of catching big fish, but it's because most of what you're going to be throwing is going to be lighter. So it's all about presentation. So if you're using lighter presentations where you throw in uh, SP minnows and soft plastics and things like that, you want to have a rod and a reel combo that's going to give you the sensitivity and the presentation that's going to catch more fish. If you were to come here and throw a 275 on a 11-foot uh, Lammy and you're going to throw uh, Ron Z's or Hoagie's, you're not going to be as successful because the presentation to the fish is not going to be as good because you're not going to be able to feel it. So the whole idea is to match your reel with the rod and the lures that you're going to present to. So that's going to be where are you fishing. So it's good to have a good understanding about where you're going to fish with that setup.